Today we are going to play a 2v2 match on a beautiful map backland which was added from the patch 2.22 which you can also download from the link in the description down below. Everybody is picking random and we get to play the Rohan faction and our ally Mundo gets to play Isengard. It's a very, very solid and strong combination Rohan and Isengard side by side unlike in the films. So build two farms and also recruit Meriadoc Brandybuck. Give them some weapons to fight with. Use Draft. And let's wall check. Looks like this player at the bottom left side seems to be evil. That means either Isengard or Mordor. And that is the reason why we need to pressure him as soon as possible. And once again, you know, early on, when you are playing against evil factions like Mordor and Isengard, your goal as good faction player, Rohan or Gondor, is to destroy as many Lumbermills as you potentially can. Isengard is here. Will he actually choose to defend himself or will he try to attack my ally? Oh, he chooses to not defend himself. That's kind of... Hmm. You know, this can... Like a double-edged sword, you know? Maybe they can deal great amount of damage to my ally, but if they can't, this Isengard player at the bottom left side will lose quite a lot. Okay, build more farms and I'm assuming we need to eventually send the Hobbit Mary and also those peasants to our ally later on to actually support them. Because it looks like he will have to deal with two players at the very same time, which is quite difficult. Okay, so let's grab the farm in the front side first. And uh, hopefully we will be able to destroy this mill, which is under the protection of the tower, but we can always kind of dodge the incoming damage. My ally lost even the mill in front of his castle. That is not looking good. Okay, that's good, because now we will have additional settlement, which means our cavalry units will get cheaper. Since farms, the more farms you have, the more food bonus you will get. And the more food bonus you will get, the more discount will be available for the cavalry units, in this case for the Rohirrim. Okay, we need to help our ally. He lost actually one of the furnaces. He might also lose the Lamry Mill. His eco isn't looking that great. But I'm assuming this guy at the bottom left side, the red Isengard player, has also some weak eco. So basically we are against double Isengard. That means the longer the game goes on, the more advantage we should be able to get. Because once again, the combination of two different factions is always better than two of the same factions in each team. Let's destroy this mill. Warchan has been used from the opponent. My ally might also use Warchan on his peasants. This way we can defend. Yeah, there we go. This way we can defend way, way easier. Remember, Warchan is able to boost your damage and armor by 50% each. Okay, let's be careful. Okay, now let's destroy the second Lamry Mill from the Isengard player, which is going to deal crazy amount of economical damage to the player. Because Isengard and Mordor, they are heavily relying on the resource income from those Lamry Mills early on. And taking them down early will kind of handicap them quite a lot. Now the stable for the Rohirrim. I mean, this map is kind of small and not small at the same time. I don't know if you get me, guys. It's kind of tricky. I don't know. I'm not confident yet on this map. I've played, you know, this is my second game, I believe, or third game on this map so far, which is once again a brand new map. We were kind of converting from BFME 2 into the battle for Middle of 1. And I cannot tell yet if this is kind of big or not. And for that reason, I'm not sure how many Rohirrim I should be going for. Normally, I like to go for two Rohirrim and get, then make the transition into uh, heroes or the armory, but in this game, we might also recruit a little bit more than two Rohirrim. Hold on. You know what I'm, what I'm trying to do, right? Boom, son! There we go! Nice! Oh, he just lost 200 resources. That hurt. But what I did, I was waiting with the Hobbit invisible while being cloaked, for him to build that and it was at zero percent he was already investing the money and then my stone hit and the building got destroyed instantly but he also lost 200 resources and that's crazy by the way effect crazy effective especially at this stage of the game this will hurt i think i play at the bottom right side quite a lot all right let's use now the rohirrim to eventually creep the war clear oh never mind we need to send them to our ally who is all about to be attacked 
um, hopefully our ally has um, you know, something like Warchant, which is going to be helpful to defend against those units. Let's ask him for that. Use it, please, 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 please. Okay. Now we can go for a trample, but there are so many units. And they are also using Warchant, of course. Oh, we are taking so much damage and we are getting slowed down. We have no heal just yet. One more trample. Okay, we gotta, we gotta, we need to get away. We need to get away. Please, please move. Don't get slowed down like that. Can we save them? Oh yeah, we can save them. That's good. Now we also need to send the second Rohirrim there as soon as possible. Run, Rohirrim, run. Okay, we can maybe buy this one. We have in total three farms outside so far, which is not bad. And yeah, let's go for one more trample. We are really close to get the heal unlocked from the spellbook. So one trample might, might actually get us the power points we need. They are not even getting one shot because they are buffed. I need to bring my first horse and we can actually, ideally, we want to heal them at the same time. And then it's going to be possible to deal with that. Come on, please, 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 please. Heal now. Now. Okay, now I believe we should be able to defend. Now, that's good. I mean, yes, we were not able to destroy the enemy mills, but we were able to keep the mills from our ally protected, which is at least as important as destroying the enemy lumber mills. But since we are badly damaged now, we need to send them back to the castle, into the well. This way we can sustain up over time. Okay, so... Um, I believe what we should be doing in this game is to recruit four Rohirrim to get the stable to level 2 for the Horseman Shields. Horseman Shields is going to make our horses, in this case the Rohirrim, much tankier against arrows. And with the Horseman Shields and eventually Theodin later on, with the additional armor and damage leadership from Theodin, we might be able to deal great amount of damage to the enemy castle. We can also try to creep the troll layers in the middle of the map. There are two. Protecting the outpost. And creeping generally means more command, uh, more power points and more experience points for the units. So let's lure. Oh no. No way. No. Move. Dude. This troll. Oh my goodness. The second troll is coming too. No. Leave me alone. Run, run, run. Oh, this is horrible, guys. What am I doing? Oh my. Oh my goodness, I was running it down also into the enemy units. Luckily, there were no pikemen anybody yet. I mean, we gotta, we gotta go to base now to heal up. Let's destroy this mill before we actually ditch. And hopefully, we will be able to save the Rohirrim. Come on, please. Please move. Okay. Oh no! What are you doing there? Oh my goodness, no way. I mean, nobody saw that. Nobody saw that, guys. And also, don't tell me that in the comment section down below. Nobody saw that. Okay. So we have some more peasants. I'm, I was actually expecting him to recruit some pikemen to counter the Rohirrim. But I believe he has not the money yet or he has not the Uruk pit level 2 just yet. And for that reason I was recruiting the peasants, you know, to crush his pikemen. But that's not necessary for now. We have the shields, that's good. Now let's wait for Theodin to come out of the Zita. Get, you know, get him mounted and get into the enemy base. That is the plan. You will have also heal up very, very soon. Okay. So, now we need to also save for the armory. And we are kind of broke. We have not that much money. Uh, I'm asking my ally for the warchant. Hopefully he has warchant. And this is going to make our units extremely beefy. There we go. Now they have the horseman shield for the tankiness. They have warchant for both the tankiness and damage. And they have Theorin for the same purpose. So now they will become invincible. But Theodian in the meantime is taking so much damage from the towers. Let's try to destroy the Uruk pit. That's going to deny him to recruit any more pikemen anytime. So, oh my goodness, he's taking so much damage. Let's use heal. That's why Theodian is so squishy, you know. And that's the right call from the Red Isengard player. Very smart, by the way. The second you see Theodian from the enemy player in your castle, make sure to select all your towers one by one and right click, right -click every single one of these on the enemy hero in this case theorin and with that you might at least be able to force him to heal and even ideally you can take him down you know all right so the the push was actually okay because you know we were able to destroy the uruk pit that's huge the uruk pit is the most uh, important structure in the isengard castle as for example the troll cage is for the mortal castle let's try to creep um, let's deal with the horses. Don't run into the pikemen, please. Oh my goodness. 
What am I doing? The trolls are mean ones. Run, run. We need to bring this Rohirrim to the allies. Oh my goodness. My Theoden got crippled too. I mean, there is no way I can save him. My heal is on cooldown. I cannot fight against enemy pikemen. I guess we need to accept it. That King Theoden is no more. And Lourdes got the experience. He's level 3 now. That's, that's not good. Okay. Now we need to also send this Rohirrim back to the castle for healing. You know, losing heroes is always a bad thing. Because... That's going to cost you so much time, you know, to revive the hero. And during all this time, you don't have enough impact on the map, on the game. So now we need to invest time and money for Theodin. We also need to buy every upgrade from the armory. Let's creep the Warclay. At least this way we can get some more, you know, more experience points and also power points and also money. Like creeping is quite effective in battle for middle of games. Oh, there is a... Okay. Oh, but he's microing with his spike man. Can we go for a trample? Press S, 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 okay. But my ally has some units. <laughs> my ally is actually going for the Uruks with armor and shields. Why? I mean, all he has to do is really to recruit some combos. You know, the combos are with Uruke and Crossbowman. And then I can put my Theodin next to the combos and we can use our uh, leadership advantage. Because the enemy has only Warchan, we will have more than that. And we should be good to go. I could also now go for the Elven Wood if I want to. But we might also try to save for the Elven Alliance instead. We shall see. Let's get the money. And it looks like we are going now to the open in peace. I think we are we should be actually saving up for the Elven Alliance. This way I can summon the elves to kinda snipe down the enemy pikes. So with the armor, heavy armor, we should be also extremely tanky. Don't run into the pikemen. Warchant from our ally has been actually used on his own units only. But, you know, the Isengard piece has a high durability. With this many towers around, it's going to be hard for my my ally to deal the damage he's looking for. Kildin is back on the field. That's good. And we are really close for the Elven Allies summon. Really, really close. Trample. Oh, look, the power points are rising to the sky. Now we can unlock the Elven Allies and use it right off the bat. Good. And now, with the Elves, let's try to kill as many pikemen as possible. We need to also use heal. Let's bring them all together and use heal. There we go. Nice. I mean, if nothing else, we will be able to destroy many of these furnaces. That's good. Um, because that's going to delay his furnaces to hit level 3. And level 3 means even more money and also, of course, more durability for the structure. And every evil resource building, in this case, slaughterhouse, lumber mills, or furnaces, once they are level 3, they're actually acting like a tower, which makes the beasts from Isengard and Mordor even more tanky and more dangerous. Okay, we have also enough... Oh, I have a plan. We need to pick Alvin Wood now and trample the combos. Do you see them? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Uh, pick up the Alvin Wood. And let's just use the Alvin Wood before we trample. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because Alvin Wood works like the freezing rain. On top of your Alvin Wood, the enemy units have no leadership bonuses. And your units have 30%, 35% increased armor. So it's a win-win situation. Okay, we need to build the stable. We lost a lot of Rohirrim. We need to replace them. But a couple of them are quite highly level. This one is level 7, for example. That's great. We can also buy the outposts in the middle of the map. And build statues and wells for the sustain and for even additional more and more leadership. Which our ally can use to heal himself up. And I love the design of the Orphan. I love the design of the new Isengard castle. I believe that looks dope. Oh, Theodin, get dismounted, please. When you are dismounted with your heroes, they will become much tankier against pikemen. So if you have to fight against enemy pikemen with your mounted heroes like Theodin, Gandalf even, or Faramir, Elma, Elvin, make sure to get dismounted to make your heroes more tanky against the pike damage. Oh, I believe the Isengard player is not paying attention and he is running it down. Alright, I will gladly take this experience. Thank you very much. Uh, Elma might actually get a lot of experience here. Please. He needs to get level 3 for the pillage or for the outlaw leadership. That means money, money, money every time we kill enemy units. Kildin is almost level 3 as well. Elma's level 4 is massive, by the way. With that, you will unlock the horse lord leadership, which makes your units deal 60% more damage. In Theodin, glorious charge. I mean, you already know, you know. 
hopefully I will be able to unlock both of these in this game. This game is actually pretty back and forth. I need to admit that the enemy team is doing a phenomenal job defending themselves all the time. But also my ally is kind of going for a, for a, a troll build, I guess. Because he's only sending Uruks forward and at this stage of the game Uruks all alone. <laughs> Look at this. What can Uruks do against crossbow man, you know? I will use this, uh, you know, this time. But he's using war chants. We have peasants around this side, so peasants can actually be used to kill the enemy pikemen eventually. All we need to do is avoid trampling down the enemy pikes. That's very important. And maybe we can also trample down these combos. So, Tildin, I, I just want to make sure that we get... Oh, but here's Saruman! No, he stole our level 9 Rohirrim! You thief! And here's Fireball too, you know. Now we need to be extremely careful. I mean, I don't want to go back yet. Let's use heal because Talion is kind of damaged and we can try to get even more experience. Oh my goodness. He basically one-shotted my Talion. Saruman, the white wizard. <laughs> Do you guys remember? <laughs> Do you guys remember this scene? Can we not make peace? You know? We shall make peace. It was kind of epic scene. I don't know why many of these epic scenes were only in the extended edition of Lord of the Rings. I cannot tell. Trample before we leave. Yama is almost level 4. Maybe we can kill the sour and get level 4. Please, 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 please. Oh, really close. Really, really close. Like a quarter away from getting the horse lord leadership unlocked. But now we don't need to even go back to the castle. Because we have well in the middle of the map. Looks like my ally wasn't able to deal crazy amount of damage. Yet he was able to destroy the citadel, which is okay. Um, Yeah, but... You know, we need combos, definitely. We need combos or we need Saruman. Because now the enemy team has like many tools, pikemen and wizards to keep themselves defending against our Rohirrim. He's not paying attention, that's good. And they're not, when they are not in the porcupine formation... Hold on a second. Are they trying to go to the outpost in the middle? That would be actually dangerous. I don't know if this is going to be a great idea. Because our Elvin summon is almost back up. And we can also use the Elvin Wood and Trample. Let's use Elvin Allies first. And then we can go for the Elvin Wood Trample moment, okay? For death and glory. Trample them all. Okay, nice. We can snipe Elma's spear on, El uh, on Lourdes. Please, 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 please. He's crippling us. That's bad. Lord, uh, can you please kill him? Elma, Elma, please, 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 please. Nice, Elma, the Horse Lord of Rohan. Okay, he has covered the tainted, uh, his own tainted land. Now we need to bail because he has so much leadership. Can we actually save our Elma, please? Hmm. Yeah, my ally was actually covering the tainted land. That's good. Okay, looks like we will be able to save the horse lord of Rohan. We also have Aragorn coming now, cooking in the citadel, which is pretty nice. Aragorn with under sword, of course, as you guys know, is extremely tanky and also hitting like an absolute truck. I mean... There is nobody that can stand, withstand this much damage. Not even Balrog can withstand this much damage. He even hurts Balrog a lot. And my ally has also Saruman now on the field. But I'm assuming, and once again, not assuming, I know, he will definitely need some combos. Like Archer's damage power from a safe distance, you know? Because the, the problem with the Uruks is, uh, against the Isengard base, is the second they enter the base, they will be attacked from multiple sides and multiple towers at the same time. Because they need to be in, in the melee range to deal damage. While combos, they can take down... Everything step by step and one by one. So now we have level 6 Elma. And we are only one level away from getting the glorious charge unlocked. Ladies and gentlemen. And this is going to be a phenomenal moment for the Rohan faction. If heal from the spell book too. Oh, the combos are unprotected. Oh, he's trying to get the money. Can they? Oh, but no. Yeah, he's going to get the money. That's okay. We need to be careful to not get... Firebolt! Firebolt! Oof, that hurts. That hurts, but... Lourdes is even more dangerous. So we, need, we need to actually be careful with against Lourdes, I mean. Ar Aragorn with the Yeti, you know, with the blue Yeti sword. May the, may the force be with you, Aragorn. Arathorn's son. I also want to get Gimli and later on also Legolas on the field. I mean, ideally in a situation like that, I believe we have like a great lead and we can try different kind of stuff. Ideally in a, in a situation like that, but I normally would do. Is build the archer range, get it to level 2 for the fire arrows, and then actually, you know, start recruiting some, ta mm, not tower guards, uh, Rohirrim archers, you know? Because then I have the mix of range damage against pikes and heroes, and the melee damage against enemy structures and combos and crossbowmen. 
Rohan can be with exclusively Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches great against anything in the game and counts literally everything. Please, can we get him to level 4? Come on, guys. Please, 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 please. Nice. Group all together. And, guys, I want you now to type in the comment section down below. Death, okay? Fourth Eolin, guys. Let's go ham, boys. Let's go ham. Trample, 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 trample. Eoma actually has been taken down so quickly. Okay. We have also Gimli in there, by the way. Let's use Atelas. Can we actually heal up? Zarma? No, that's not possible, I guess. Um, we have heal. I would like to save my heal for my ally. And we have only six power points collected. Once we have seven, oh, he has freezing rain. Give me this extra against this many. <laughs> this, you know, let's use heal to save him. Uh, against this much leadership doesn't even hurt those pikemen or not one shot them anymore. Looks like we won't be able to finish off this guy in this push. So we need to, you know, don't overcommit. There is no reason to. Because overcommitting might end quite badly for you. Okay, please. If we can get him to level 3, that's gonna be nice. There is Lourdes. Okay, so do heal up in the middle. I wanna actually use. Oh, he got crippled down. I want to actually use my Gimli, guys. <laughs> Hold on a second, I have an idea. I wanna use Gimli to kill this Lourdes. Can, can we do that? I mean, Gimli is extremely slow, so if, as long as this Lourdes keeps running away, there is no world in, the, in which we can catch him. We might need to use Elendil. There we go. Please? Gimli? Gimli? Come on, Gimli? Gimli, come on! Nice! <laughs> nice! Alright, now we can jump on them. Jump, 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 jump! Don't dodge like that! Oh, he has used War Chant, and Aragorn is, of course, very, very strong, but is he strong enough? The Claw Break is gonna be useless because Saruman is nearby, and Saruman gives fear resistance. Don't use Claw Break in a situation like that. We need to run for our lives. I don't know if we can. I don't know how fast and how soon. Oh, he killed my Aragorn with the Fireball. Oh no, the King of Gondor is no more. So we need to bail. And <laughs> Aragorn, reviving Aragorn is so expensive, you know? And the Isengard heroes are actually doing a phenomenal job defending. That's good. I like that. I like that. I mean, we have Cloud Break now. We need to go for the base rush. Looks like we have also a uh, glorious charge available once again let's use the elven allies to kill some pikemen here so many pikemen everywhere we need to avoid trampling them i'm actually pretty tempted to use cloud break now maybe we should use cloud break to stun them for 10 seconds it's gonna give us some time because now they can't move okay he's coming of course defend to defend himself Death. there we go oh food Oh, I thank you very much for the for the combos. They have no heavy armor, no leadership. Holy guacamole. Thank you so much, my friend. We really appreciate the dinner. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. What can men do against such a reckless seat? I mean, that's what Theodin used to say, but in this case, Isengard is supposed to see that. But the, oh, one more trample into the crossbow, man. I will take it every day of the week. And now, bail, run for your lives. And our Gimli is almost level 5. Level 5, remember, unlocks the Slayer ability, which is giving him double the damage and double the movement speed. With the double the movement speed, he will be able to catch every single infantry unit slash hero in no time. So hopefully our opponent doesn't pay attention and doesn't demolish the Lamer Meal in time. This way, after taking this down, Gimli is gonna hit level 5. I mean, his structural damage isn't the greatest. And... Without being level 5, he's not going to be quite efficient. But it's fine. So let's heal up. Let's close the gate, by the way. Because I'm afraid of a, of a potential gate rush. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's good. Now, you have you will see the potential strength of the son of Gloin, Gimli. Because now we can also run down heroes like Lourdes, if they have no cripple. And even Saruman. Aragorn is on the field. My ally has finally some combos. This might be it, boys. This might be the push. Because I believe the Isengard play at the bottom right side. Oh, Legolas. Oh, no. Le should I heal him? I, I want to keep him alive. Oh, my goodness. The fireball actually almost one-shotted him. Okay, I mean, I even healed, by the way, but it was not necessary, I guess. Okay, Legolas has to be revived. Okay, that is Saruman. You already know me. I want to actually hunt this Saruman because Gimli has to take the revenge. 
for his elvish friend Legolas. That's why he needs to run down this white wizard. Do it, Slayer, and right click. Look at him, guys. Look at him raging now. Oh, you better run. I don't know if this Lourdes has crippled or not. If he doesn't have crippled, this Saruman is gonna trust me on that one. Come on, Gimli. Gimli! He wants to cripple. Please, 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 please. Nice! The cripple is a little bit too late and the wizard has been slain. You don't touch my friend Legolas. Saruman, you might be a wizard, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dwarf. Oh my goodness, Elvin. Elvin get dismounted once again to become more tanky, but I believe he's too late. And Elvin, the shield made of Rohan, is no more. And Gimli is beefy and tanky, by the way. So taking down Gimli... I mean, Gimli doesn't have a crazy amount of damage output until you get Slayer unlocked. Uh, but he's beefy, and he's, I believe, the tankiest hero against archers. So you can tank these arrows for days. For death and glory, once again. And we are almost at the power point for the army of the Dead Summon. We need only two more former power point. Let's use Blade Master to defend this area. Aragorn hitting like an absolute track. There is nobody that can contest him at this point. Especially with the Unreal and Blade Master combination. Look at him, guys. He's slow slaughtering them, you know? And also, Aragorn has splash damage, which means he has the chance to hit move. What am I doing? I'm actually feeding. Okay, let's abort the mission. Oh, my ally, was, that was a juicy fireball. I like that. I mean, I believe they have nothing left anymore. I mean, we killed um, the Saruman. I have not paid that attention about the Lourdes, but Saruman is definitely dead. Orphan is getting destroyed. It's beautiful. Beautiful structure in the middle of the Isengard base is no more. Let's use Slayer one more time for the double speed. Kaelden is running it down. And in the worst case scenario, we need only two power points and a quarter for the army of the dead. And I believe that's not even going to be needed. And I need to admit that's a good matchup for the Rohan Isengard team. Um, in this case, as double Isengard, you need to win this game a bit sooner. You want to rush the, you know, uh, rush the Isengard as soon as possible. In this case, this double Isengard team, they needed to rush my ally at the top right side all the time to put him really behind. Because defending all alone is not going to win you the game. I want to see the damage from extra against structure. Q. Okay, not the best. <laughs> not the best. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. We are really close to hit 16,000 subscribers on this channel. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always ladies and gentlemen stay beyond standards peace out